Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of NBS Radio. I'm just going to go come right out and say it. Uh, we have a lot to cover in this episode. I know that in the past we've talked about doing thumbnail or uh, timestamps, rather, for when the upload happens. And this is probably going to be one of those episodes because, my, my, a lot has happened. Um, to help me cover the, the gravity of what is going on with our region today, I have a few panelists with me who are going to be joining and talking. So, uh, yeah, I'll just introduce them one at a time. Ghost, a.k.a. Payleaf. Hello. Chipoli. Hey. Bob. That's me, I'm Mario. And Ara. Hello. All right. So, the title of this episode is We Are at War. And why is that the title? Because we are at war. <laughs> uh, that is the easiest way to put it. Very unprecedented event for us. Has not happened in over a decade, for those of you who are historians, TNP historians, rather. Um, none of us on this broadcast today were here when the last war in TNP history happened. I see that Elu is here. Elu in the audience might be able to tell us when this last happened. Uh, and if he does, I will be sure to bring that up later in the broadcast of when our last war was, against who it was, and what the result of that might have been. Um, but right now, the North Pacific is at war with both the Brotherhood of Malice, aka BOM, and the Communist Bloc, which is TCB. RA passed uh, two separate motions. It was decided that there were going to be two motions. And so now we are recognizing a uh, state of war with both of them. And the key word here is recognizing. And I think that's what I really want to touch on to begin with. Recognizing versus declaring. I know that ghost is kind of like, I, I don't even know how to put it. Like, as far as when it came to recognizing versus do we declare, you had some thoughts on it. And that ended up being what we did. So I'm going to let you explain to your audience what the difference is and what the distinctions are between recognizing as opposed to declaring that war exists. Well... Legally, there's no difference, but as far as explaining yourself, that it's the difference between we decided on our own, we want to attack people, we want to go to war with them, and recognizing the fact that we were attacked and we're simply just acknowledging that acts of war were committed against us and therefore we're in a state of war. And there's no point in tying our hands behind our backs when we've already been attacked by someone. So that's basically the logic behind it. Yeah, and I know for some people, uh, you have people on both sides where they think, like, yeah, legally, no difference, uh, pretty semantics as far as that's concerned. And then you have people who maybe it really does matter to them that it's just, it's more symbolic of these things have happened to antagonize us. So instead of just like outright, we're, like, I wouldn't say, and I wouldn't say that the international community really thinks that we're the aggressors here. We're more the respondents to BOM and TCB's aggression. So I think uh, recognizing as opposed to declaring sort of works there. Um, Elu actually did get got me uh, back with a response pretty quickly here. He said that uh, the last time we were at war was in 2008, and that lasted until 2012, where the war recognition was repealed. We were at war with the Empire, Gatesville, and the New Inquisition. Interesting. Those are some regions from uh, quite a while ago. So, yeah. If you were around in 2008 or 2012, any time in TNP, and that's a few years straight there, you would have been for our last war. But uh, like I said, none of us have been. So this is unfamiliar territory for uh, the modern day TNP, I would say. Speaking of uh, the modern day TNP, I think that Chipoli and Ara get the best of like that new experience of being a younger TNP as far as time spent in the region. And just getting to see things uh, kind of blow up this way. Um, what's been for you guys, I guess, the most stark difference that you've noticed in wartime versus peacetime TNP? What have you noticed anything different that's going on? Uh, do you think there's anything that maybe you know kind of shows the times a bit? Um, yep, I do think that there have been some important differences in wartime DMP and peaceful DMP, as we call it. Um, so, for reference, I joined about a year and a half before these whole shenanigans started getting underway. And uh, for a long time in just regular gameplay 
from um, around 2019 following the, the attempted coup on TDP to around uh, this war, our nation states has been in a very peaceful period, um, a peace that we have not stealed for a long time, but things are heating up um, again. But um, I'm, I'm trying to avoid going on a tangent here, but uh, so what changed in TNP? So first of all, this point was brought up in those who um, advocated for declaring war, uh, including myself and a few others on this podcast, um, that the NPA, they argued that the NPA would have significantly more new recruits than they had before, and I have definitely seen that. I mean, I've seen more new applicants in around the matter of two days than in several weeks. And it's really encouraging to see many new people uh, joining the NPA, helping us out with the war effort uh, towards our common goal of victory, of course. And the attitude has changed a lot. And we're we're more we're more alert now. Um, we're taking the, the Security Council. I'm involved in that, and so is Ghost. Yeah, um, that's actually what I was going to mention next. Is that you know everyone's got a big thing is oh yeah, I joined the NPA R and D like military gameplay. I was just going to say like early on, just kind of to set the tone. Like there are multiple ways in which you know TNPers can support our region's war effort. And you, uh, as a as a good example, you've become an SCR during this time. So uh, we've seen kind of both the traditional way, of, and then we've seen kind of the inverse. And what I mean by that is the traditional way of a new SCR coming up, like help defend the region at home. But then we've seen the inverse of that with a, with SCR um, low stepping down to join as sort of a mercenary to help the the war. So we kind of see, you know, in SCRs, we've seen people coming in, we've seen people, you know, stepping down, both in direct relation to uh, the state of war course and that was the point i was getting that um of course for the reasons i joined our security council personally was to help us protect ourselves um from these threats and we've already seen a few shenanigans from bom and t t uh, cb and of course we're going to keep countering them and um the security council has done a great job with taking care of of those nations who have been engaged in those unruly activities against our wonderful region. And really, we're much more alert to threats. We're much, we're on our heels. Uh, rather, as you know, we've had a bit of a peaceful period, but now we have to really um, be prepared for anything. And I think that goes for all of TNP. We are more alert. We're we're ready. We're ready to step into into this war, and we are now ready to just, to just stand up to our um, mercenaries, and I think they'll see that we really are in for a huge fight here, and we really are up to the task. Yeah, I don't know what the, uh, I don't know how the alertness level works for, like, militaries in real life. Like, the, I don't know how that scale works. I know it's DEF CON, but I don't know which one's, like, the most severe. Uh, the way I... Picture- one. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, the way I picture it is that, like, we're, <laughs> the, the, the arrow has, like, shifted on the scale. Like, we are, we are further into, like, oh, full, full on wartime TNP. And that was my thing. Uh, I'm gonna let you go here in a sec, Ara, but, uh, that was my thing. It was that... If we're going to go to war, like we need to 100% absolutely commit to it. And I've got to say, I've been pretty pleased to see what uh, both the government and just regular everyday citizens have been doing to kind of really commit to the idea that, yeah, we're at war now. That doesn't usually happen. But when it does happen, we're going to bring it and it's it's going to, you know, it's going to make some impact. So I uh, I've really enjoyed seeing kind of. Uh, how efforts have come together early on. And obviously, you know, the the key with that's going to be sustainability, making sure that, 
you know, our efforts keep coming together the way that they have. But I'd say we've gotten off to a relatively strong start, and I don't think anyone uh, could really point out anything to the contrary of that. Or, uh, would you like to uh, share your experience? I mean, Chipotle said exactly what I was going to say, really. and, I th- and I think, as well as that, it was on the R&B. I think I've seen a lot of support for the region and a general rise in morale and um, stuff like that, which has been great. And I think it's been really good to see the amount of enthusiasm for the North Pacific Army and the new TNP militia. Which is very exciting. Yes, we will get into that. The TNP militia. You know. And I think it shows that we are as prepared as we can be, I think, in terms of kind of psychological morale for this war. Yeah, I know the big criticism was, oh, TNP took a long time to get to this. But listen, here, here's the way I see it. It's like the giant is no longer sleeping, okay? Um, and like you mentioned, I guess as ready as you can be, this doesn't happen. Usually that's not uh, what we kind of have to be alert about, but sort of a mix of what you and Chipotle were saying. Number one, uh, we're more alert to it. And number two, it's as prepared as it's going to likely be. Uh, and the impact is definitely being made every single day out there on update. Um, I kind of wanted to break this up a little bit with Chipotle and Ara being the younger TNPers here. Uh, Bob, you and I, you're a little bit more senior in TNP than I am, but we're kind of about the same time, that 2019, 2018 sweet spot there. So I'm going to yes, ask sir. you, I'm going to ask you, having been here for you know, four plus years, four plus years now, um, what are you noticing from how TNP is now in uh, wartime? Something we haven't seen. I gotta say, I have not seen this number of signups for the NPA. I have not seen this number of signups for the executive staff. I have not seen this level of enthusiasm from middle management, from uh, guys doing the grunt work, from even command level authority in TNP. I have not seen this level of of full steam ahead enthusiasm uh, on an executive standpoint in a long time. Um, I don't want to name names per se, but I I will say that in my experience, rising through the ranks, um, the first time of many, um, the best time, I guess, to do that was the cleanest path to doing so, I suppose, was uh, during Sawali's term. It was just very straightforward, a relatively peaceful time, as I remember it. Uh, we weren't really in any ideological conflict, uh, just kind of doing our own thing in the NPA. But during this sort of grandiose ideological struggle, it almost feels as if TNP is coming to a climax. This grand story that's been that's been written about for a while this capital i independence um is going to uh is sort of i don't want to say it's at its end but it's sort of trying to make its own stand it's sort of trying to um set its own place in stone Uh, if you haven't seen that level of enthusiasm for TNP as a whole in a while. Um, and while the solidarity, uh, there's still some, there's still some internal politicking going on within some of the organizations in TNP. Um, that we, I'd like to think that we're doing a good job of trying to keep that all in house rather than, um, let that dilute a war effort. So I'd, I'd like to think that TNP is presenting a fairly united front as far as this goes. Uh, and that, you know, we need business this time. Yeah, the idea of a united front is uh, really big. And what I was kind of going to mention there for a sec was that anybody who's, you know, kind of been on the fence about joining the NPA, like, I don't know if it's really for me. I don't know if I really want to get involved in R&D. Maybe you're, maybe you're strongly convinced, you know, like I know... Uh, 
one person you're listening to us. Sorry, I'm going to call you on a little bit there, but not not a bad, <laughs> not a bad one. I understand that some people have convictions about R and D that you know they feel one way or another. I'm saying to the people who maybe don't know how they feel about it, and maybe you know you don't know if you'll like it, but you're curious about trying something new. Let me tell you, there is no better time. Okay, the NPA, uh, we have like this mentorship thing. You will get someone to sit there and explain it to you at whatever pace you need to. It's okay. Like, if you go out on an update and you don't like it, fine. Like, that's cool. If if you don't get enjoyment from the game from it, that's totally cool, right? But I'm saying, like, if you are looking for ways to get involved, right, and you, and you really just want to try something new, the NPA is there. Like, there is joy in the NPA. There is we'll no better time. <laughs> side, I will put the side up in the chat for you. No excuse. Yeah, and we've seen we've seen a lot of people signing up, which is great. Uh, this kind of we're gonna bring ghosts back in here, but uh, one of the things that yeah, Hassan's about. No, 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 no. I'm gonna feed. I'm gonna prompt him. Up, uh, and one of the things one of the things that was discussed internally early on is the idea of you know how war benefits us in like both the immediate and long term aspect of things and one of the things that was discussed is there is there going to be like a galvanization of the people are they going to care are they going to like you know do all these things i know that's something that ghost was really uh enthusiastic about and i will say live here on air that i initially did doubt that i didn't know if us being in a state of war would necessarily trigger that as he described it so i kind of had a little bit of a uh epiphany within myself where i was like you know what if i'm so if I if I have a reason to doubt that that'll happen, why don't I just become part of the reason it happens, uh, to make sure it happens? So I just I I kind of did like not a 180 because I was never against the war effort. I just needed to like have some questions answered, like for my sake, you know, to be like fully confident in it. And so for me, what I did is uh, the way I handled it was that I just decided to go 100% all in, you know, like fully wartime tnp you know the wartime general francois isidore but yeah ghost uh i will say you have been vindicated you have been proven right that yes people do care lots of people care and uh we've had some great responses kind of like bob was saying we've had some great responses in the uh early war effort here well thanks for having me on robes so i can say i told you so i really like to be able to say that and uh i will proudly say i told you so yeah I feel like you've earned it. I feel like you've earned it because yeah. right. I, yeah. War war has a has a habit of clearing things up and making the stakes very clear for people. It draws lines. It makes very clear sides. And if you can't stand up and get excited to defend your region when it's under attack, then I guess you're just gonna roll over and die. So like, of course, of course, that's gonna get recruitment numbers up. I I'm not surprised at all. And. Uh, I'm also glad that you you jumped back into you know one of the areas you do best, and we saw uh, our security counselor Low resign so he can get involved. Uh, it's a it's a very different time, and yeah, I'm I'm very pleased with how it's gone so far. And uh, T and Peers rose to the occasion and did not disappoint me. Yes, uh, this is a bit of a segue into like our next big thing that we're going to be talking about. But for those of you who maybe you know don't follow the internal rise and falls of the NPA and stuff like that. I have returned to the NPA. Uh, General Robespierre answers the call of war. So that's kind of what I was talking about when you just 100% go all in. Uh, I rejoined. Cash was, you know, I mentioned I was kind of thinking about it. Um, And then Cash kind of messaged me and was like, hey, you know, you should really do that. And so then I got thinking about it a bit more seriously. And yeah, I came back uh, to help lead the war effort. And I got to say, it's going good so far, which uh, the next big thing, obviously, that I was going to talk about was the TNP militia. But before we get on to that, yeah, just the idea of people caring, um, not only within TNP, but also within other regions, the response has been great as far as that united front. I feel like if you're in BOM or TCB right now, it's hard to feel like the entire world is not against you, like the entire nation states world, um, because it's not just us. It's not just Europa. It's not just uh, League and Concord. It's not just, I know TGW hasn't like declared war or anything, but Ghost mentioned, you've mentioned before, they probably just consider themselves in a perpetual state of war against Raiders. Um, but 
no, it's all these different regions coming together for this unified effort. Um, and if someone wants to link the Solidarity Garrison Dispatch, just so, you know, maybe our live listeners can see some of the regions just dedicating their, uh, you know, endorsements and members to this effort. It's pretty widespread from areas that I wouldn't necessarily think, you know, going into it, we're going to show out like that. And they have. And similar to what Bob was saying, internally, people have shown out. We have people in uh, both in comms and in other ministries, obviously the Ministry of Defense, in WA, we're still chugging along. Look, we have all these ministries where obviously the delegates' plans are still being followed as they were campaigned on. But the realities of war do change things. I know for comms, we have a number of different things we're doing. And one of those things uh, was we kind of expanded on the design team idea into now we're having people make war posters. Uh, I know Bran has really been a terrific help at that, and I see him in the audience, so thank you, Bran. I don't know if you like credit for it, even though I've been giving you credit, but you're great at it. Uh, we've had, I think, we've had Ruben. Ruben internally has been pretty good. We've had... Even everyday TNPers, or I've actually gotten some telegrams from people not in TNP who have sent me things about how, you know, they, they support TNP and here's what they created, even though if they if I want to feature it in a dispatch, here's what they've created as like a war poster for us. Like we have people, you know, in other parts of the game really supporting and going to bad for us too. I joked about this with Bob, but I'm pretty sure I get more telegrams nowadays than when I was delicate, like just actually, unironically. Because ever since this whole war thing has started and I'm like on the RO spot as, you know, Minister of Comms and General of the Militia, I, I get a lot of telegrams from people within the region, you know, uh, people in other and regions sending me stuff about this. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm getting a lot of telegrams nowadays, so it's busy, busy times for the North, but in a good way, in a good way. And uh, yeah, that ends up to our next topic, which is the genesis of the TNP Militia. Yes, yes. So, I'm, I'm going to paint a picture. I know I've been talking for a lot here. But I'm going to paint a picture for you guys. Ready? Everyone thinks that TNP... You know, we don't have the numbers we used to. We don't have 20 jumpers doing this and that like we used to. No, no, no. This is in 2020. This is in 2019. So, what are we going to bring to the table list? Well... Little did uh, people remember that even though uh, the Frontiers and Stronghold up update kind of cost us some of our spawns, um, I've been conjuring endorsements out of thin air, practically. There are dozens and dozens of people signed up to the TNP militia now. Um, for OPSEC reasons, we're not going to give the exact number, probably. But... Uh, probably should. It doesn't really matter. I, I don't think it really I don't think it really matters, but all people really need to do is look in solidarity and just look at the TNP flags you see. Um the TNP militia effort has been very successful so far. And for those of you who don't know what the TNP militia is, um it's an idea that Cash and Confed were pro I don't want to take credit for it because Cash and Confed would have probably done this anyway. But I am I th I had a vision for it. And since then, I'm kind of the general of the NPA who's tasked with it. Well, not kind of, I am. I'm the general of the militia. But um, what, that, what we really do in the militia is, okay, usually you have the auxiliary and you have the special forces. The special forces is the jumping force. People look at that and they think that that determines the strength of the NPA, right? Then you have the auxiliary people who they come in once you secure a region, you pile this and that. They're the piling force. But now... You have the TNP militia. And here's how the TNP militia a little bit differs. Say for whatever reason, you don't want to register a forum account, or you can't register a forum account, or you can't have Discord, or you don't have Discord, whatever the case may be. If you just want to stay on the nation state site itself, you want to never leave the NS site, but you want to contribute to the war effort nonetheless. You want to stand with your region. You want to protect what TNP holds dear. You can still do that through the TNP militia. And the way it works is that nations, native nations who are interested, they just telegram me. That's one of the reasons I've been getting so many telegrams. You telegram me. You say, hey, I'm interested in joining. Um, and then I have like an ongoing roster. We made like a roster for militia members. And you get added to the telegram list. What does the telegram list do? Well, it means that, number one, there is a dispatch you can look at that's pinned to the WFE. 
that'll have standing orders for you to follow, which is basically things that you can do in a few simple clicks to help you support the war effort. But in addition to that, uh, once you get added to that Telegram list, I Telegram you when the standing orders change. So you don't even have to look at the dispatch, like, routinely. I will just let you know if you're a militia member. And then you just move in, you just tell me you moved in, we're all good. Never leave the NS site. No forum permissions, no Discord permissions, none of that. Uh, it is like the, it is it is truly the civilian fighting force, the militia. And that's why it's so aptly named. But yes, that is what the TMP militia is. Bob, you have never seen something like this. I know you've been a long time in Pierre. But you have seen that in other regions. This is like our adaptation of that. How do you think that's going so far from like an uh, external point of view? Because I know how it's going because I run it. But how? My, my question is how do you think it's going like other people? Let me be honest. I did not expect this level of enthusiasm for an organized pilot program within TNP. I, I just did not expect this level of response. Um, because, you know... I've, I've tried to do it several times and I never really got any help internally or externally. I just kind of had to try to DIY it and the DIYing it didn't exactly work. Um, so kudo, big kudos to you for getting it to work in the TNP setting, um, regardless of changing circumstances. That's all one, that's all water under the bridge. Um, kudos to you for getting it to work. Um, because I think the response that we've gotten so far is excellent. Um, and I, I haven't looked at the numbers that often myself, because to be honest, that don't, it doesn't really have a big impact on me one way or the other. But I think the, um, definitely, definitely something to keep an eye on. Definitely something to keep an eye on, to keep tabs on, to keep reviewing internally, I suppose. Um, but good, good stuff so far. Um, and as somebody who's seen the full might of excellent piler programs, just doing it. Just keep doing it. Good stuff. I like it so far. You, uh, you're a, you're an everyday NPA, so like you said, uh, you are going to be in this regardless. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that it hasn't had some growing pains. Obviously, if you, if you add a whole new branch on to the military, something, you kind of got to have those formative moments, and we kind of saw that with the whole uh, BOM report with, oh, we, you know, they tricked, like, some natives into doing something. Well, here's the thing about that. Uh, we've already responded to that. We have, like, we put out an internal memo to militia members, kind of, uh, to help rein them in a little bit, to just have, like, a more coordinated and effective, this is who you listen to, and this is why you listen to them. Don't let, you know, BOM or TCB or whoever else kind of trick you into going along with it, just because... You know, we've seen people pose as other people, like earlier so far in this war. Ghost can talk a little bit about that, or even Chipoli, our two resident SCers on this panel. And I will let you guys talk about that here in a minute. But um, yeah, that's kind of another dimension to war. You get some tactics that you usually wouldn't find out in the open, but when it's war, hey, all bets are off. And uh, yeah, we as far as the militia is concerned, one of the things I've had to do is really make sure that the militia members know who they should be looking to. Um, and especially who they should take like standing orders from because yeah, ideally you said you don't know who they are, Bob, ideally, uh, neither would anyone not in command, right? Cause I don't want it to be like a public list where people can get like, you know, targeted or picked out or something. I would rather like it to just be, you see like their alternate nations, nobody but command really knows who they are and they just show up in a region. That would be like, you know, the, the, dream scenario i don't know if that's going to happen i don't know if that will happen i don't even know if that can happen but that would be the that would be the dream scenario so yeah i kind of like that aspect of it where it's up to the nations themselves if they want to be like yes i'm supporting the war effort join you know as i have and you know what we've seen a lot of people do that who are not like government officials who are not in peers we've seen a lot of like uh natives posting on the rmb like hey do this do this do this and i think that's fantastic personally but yeah, you always got to watch out for those figures in the shadows. So let's turn it over to our SCers to talk about a little incidents. Okay, so yeah. Um, as you all know, we've had two nations from BOM, Alex, one of the tax ma um, taskmasters, or I don't know his position, but he's sort of the BOMers. 
And look, we've also had Ever Wandering Souls, also known as Souls, who is one of the most important people in the rating sphere in general, both in TBH and BOM. Um, we've had them pose as fictional positions. Um, they've been sending telegrams to people um, claiming to be quote unquote the minister of domestic affairs which no such position exists but they targeted game siders and those game siders to be frank wouldn't know any better so they assumed that uh, that nation was a genuine member of TNP's government despite having no game side masking or evidence to back it up and then um, there was also one more that tried to counterclaim this by saying that person was uh, a fake and that they were real. Um, and you should listen to us when that person was also fake. So it's kind of like, kind of like a double whammy. And I, I, I noticed um, that us on a certain day, I was having a very quiet and a tartan day. And then within the space of around 90 minutes, multiple nations have endorsed me, some unendorsed me. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is unusual. This should not, this is, I'm not really seeing this happen before. Um, I'm going to tell Ghost and I'm going to see what he thinks. I hope to not be paranoid. And then Ghost was the one who, who investigated further and realized that there were two people from BOM um, posing as government officials. And then he, we, he brought it up to the SC um, and we ended up kicking out both nations because uh, Alex reviewed himself, Alex from BOM, he reviewed himself to be Al Vaitone, who was, um, was one of the nations who um, was a fake a domestic minister of, of yeah, fake um, minister of domestic affairs and the other nation, Solstice Nation, which was the Northern Boys, um, they actually had participated in the Dell tip, and that was grounds enough for to ban check them, of course. Um, Tyler Tony has been rebuilt to be a foreign agent, and it was discovered that the Northern Boys part, um, participated in the, in the Dell tip. Uh, we had a whole court case in order for us to actually be ejected with that ended up being redundant as we already had enough grounds to be eject them. And you have um this is the sort of behavior that BOM is just doing to just mess with us. And they also ended up getting two members of um our militia to participate in one of their one of their raids. So it was one BOM member and two TMP mem um, members of T TMP militia. Um and of course, um, that's not a good look, but we're going to work to fix that. And um, I know Robes and Bob, you're working very hard at that to make sure that never happens again. Yeah, and that's and, one of the things I was kind of preemptively explaining. That it, yeah, it did happen. We're not going to like gloss over that. But in response to Sil's question, I noticed you kind of like crossed it out because you said it was entered partially. I will say for the, for the just for clarity's sake for our audience, uh, we are getting some questions in like the audience from people asking stuff and if they have a question for me or anyone on the panel they are more than welcome to ask because one of the things about this broadcast is not just for us to talk about it but also for like other people to um, really kind of get a sense or get clarity as opposed to what this war is what's it about how's it going to be executed obviously in no specific terms how it's going to be executed but uh, just generally how they can help, how they can participate, how they can do that. That is all what this episode is about. One of the things Sil was saying is, like, how are you going to make sure the militia members are in line to, like, you know, make sure that they're really doing what they're supposed to as opposed to not, you know, being allowed into enemy hands and doing that. I think that's kind of like the extension of what his question was. And um, the way you do that is you, number one, make it very clear to people. So there are informational dispatches that both Confed and I have put out. Um as far as, like, information, information that anyone can access. But obviously, you know, not everyone's going to click on that. We've had great responses to those dispatches, lots of reads, lots of upvotes. 
Um, but obviously not everyone's going to fall into that same line. And some people are going to have questions. Uh, part two of that is you make it, you make it to where when they have questions, they know exactly who to ask. So, you know, if you want to ask Ghost, for example, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, hey, what's going on? Why is TNP doing this? I'm sure he's more than welcome and more than happy to answer that. Uh, if you want to ask me, hey, how about the TNP militia? What's going on? You can totally do that. If you want to ask Comfed, hey, what's the best thing for me to do in the NPA? We have an entire dispatch on that about the different branches and why you might want to join one versus the other. Uh, so part two is really making sure that we can answer as many questions preemptively as possible, but also just making sure that if anyone else does have any questions that aren't answered, they have somebody to go to. And then part three of that is, I think, something that Ghost internally was talking to me about, which is uh, just the overall NPA's discipline. That's something that's like been a thing. Um, with natives, it can get a little bit uh, unpredictable at times. You know, we always talk about the RMB this, the RMB that, for better or for worse. But uh, when you really are counting on these nations to do X and Y thing, you kind of have to follow up with them. Um, and we've had a few cases where <laughs> I, I have needed to follow up with them. And that's kind of uh, another part of the growing pains that I was alluding to is that, hey, when people are not kind of like doing what they're supposed to, it's not just, oh, OK, well, whatever. Uh, that that communication has to come sort of proactively. Like you do have to mention, hey, I noticed you did this. Why did you do this? Could we kind of get you to like refocus? Because, you know, it, it, it's it's expected that some of them are going to drift a little bit. Uh, just because they're not used to this, we're not used to this. It's kind of unexplored territory. So from a from an NK, NPA command standpoint, it's really just streamlining the process, making it very clear like what's expected from people, what they're getting themselves into if they do decide to sign up, and then just using the numbers that we have the most effective way possible. I think that's the best way I can answer that question. And that's what we've been working to do. Less than like a day after that BOM thing happened, we put out both a telegram from me was sent to all militia members kind of outlining expectations both about uh, discipline and about who to listen to orders from and then we also i added another section onto the uh, militia dispatch that's pinned to the wfe uh, it's a section on who should i take orders from and it tells you exactly who you should take orders from and why you should be careful about listening to people like the northern boys and palvatone um yeah so even things like that it's not one of those things where we're just looking at it and we're like, well, this happens sometimes. Oh, well. No, I mean, if we see it this early on, obviously we're going to have something to say about that. We're going to have to do something about that internally to make sure, like Chipotle was saying, that that doesn't happen again. So, yeah, that is uh, what I've been up to, like, most recently, I would say, as far as the bullish is concerned. Sorry, Chipotle, if I got you off there, but yeah, I did relate to that. Ara says, uh, really good numbers. Yeah, by the way, we have 12 audience members. This is fantastic. Uh, all of you audience members, if you have anything you want to ask me, I saw Fiji ask something there, but I didn't didn't quite understand if it was just his conversation with JD. Um, if you want to ask me a question, just ping me uh, or, or ping the person you're asking, and we'll make sure that we can answer it. Because what this broadcast is about is not only to explain what's happened, like I said, but just make it clear, like, what is TNP doing in this? Why are we doing it? Who's doing what? So, yeah. This is a thing. Um, we went over the TNP militia. We went over just the general thing. I'm going to put this to you, Ghost, since you are the Minister of Foreign Affairs, a.k.a. probably the North's voice abroad in an SGP. If you had to tell a newcomer, what is this war about? What would you tell them if they were to ask you? It's about standing up against these bullies who have been plaguing this game for almost two years and have personally messed with us more times than I care to count now and have directly invaded us, which I don't know about you, but when I think about causes for war and response, one of the top of the list would be when somebody literally breaks through your door and invades your space. It doesn't get any more personal or obvious than that. So... Uh, it's simply about responding to what has already been done to us. And hopefully uh, the world is sick of these uh, these games that they're playing. And uh, if, I, if I'm if i right, once again, you know, in the future, being able to tell people I told you so, if I'm right that a lot of other regions are just as fed up with this as we are and really are kind of tired of their whole stick, then this should be very clear 
and very effective period for us where the world finally does something about it and we could finally put these guys to rest and move on and have more pleasant arguments with raiders and and stuff and you know it's just it hasn't it hasn't felt the same as the game was before BOM came back on the scene and I would really like to go back to a time where we didn't have to deal with this kind of stuff and I mean for me personally that's a goal of mine I don't know if you could ever really make a nation states war that can promise that kind of a thing but what a war can do is it can finally give them a taste of their own medicine and uh, mix things up and change the dynamics so that even if they're not defeated, that I think there will be some kind of change as a result of all the shifting ground that's going on right now. And that's about all you can really hope for with the nation states war. But I, I feel like this one's going to be different just because of the, the scale of the silent majority, shall we say, to use a political term that I think exists out there. I think there's a lot of people that are just waiting to jump in on this who maybe we're on the fence and hopefully we'll hop off the fence now. Uh, I think it's all about making very clear what the stakes are, what the sides are, where the line is, and people can't pretend it's murky or, you know, oh, it's this opinion, it's that opinion. I think it's pretty clear when, when regions get attacked and when you can't really look away anymore from what the reality of the situation is. Uh, I just want there to be very clear sides. And being in the middle, I don't think it's really an option anymore. It's a luxury that uh, I would hope that few regions would have at this point. So to me, that that's what the war is about. But fundamentally, because, uh, you know, I'm the foreign policy person. So, of course, I, th I think of it in those terms, too. It's it's fundamental. Your, your house, they broke into your house. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to do nothing? I, I don't think that's an acceptable answer. So... We're just responding to the reality of the situation. We recognized a state of war exists. It wasn't a war we were looking for, contrary to what they would very much like to say. They were the ones egging us on and literally saying, where's that declaration of war? We're going to keep messing with you until you declare war on us. Well, you know, you can't say we wanted this and then act like that. So it's it's a response. And it's a response to any, any region whether they're a democracy or something else, I think it's a response any region would, would have. And it's the only appropriate response. We're here yeah. to serve our region, our people, and make sure they have they have a game and a community. And if that stuff gets threatened, we it's our job to protect it and try to stop somebody from messing with that. I, I don't believe for a second, if they had the capability, if they had the numbers, if they had the enthusiasm, if they had the chance to come into our region and kick us all out and destroy our stuff and and put graffiti all over it, they absolutely would in a heartbeat. I don't think anybody really believes otherwise. Now, do would we feel the same right now? Absolutely. But did we have a reason to do that before? I wouldn't say so, at least not in TMP. A lot of people in TMP probably would have always been up for that, but... Uh, ultimately we like our, we like our space, we like our stuff and we, you know, haven't really been looking for getting into conflicts. We had a bunch of partners a couple of years ago. Um, uh, the rating situation changed big time. It's like, none of that was our idea. We didn't want that stuff to happen. We've, we've been responding for a very long time. And, uh, even this declaration is, a, you know, is a response, but the time for us to let stuff happen and then do stuff uh, in return, that time is over, I think. I think now we need to start doing stuff and have them respond. And in a war, that's that's kind of how war works. So I'm looking forward to more such things and we're committed to it. You know, this government's committed to it. We're gonna we're gonna try to get it done for you guys. So uh help us out the more help we have the easier it'll be the the more options we'll have on the table uh but fundamentally it's about existence it's about the way we play this game and being able to continue to play it that way without these uh these trolls doing their trollsy stuff i mean you know trolls can be fun now and then depending on the situation but 
over and over and over again, the joke is beyond old and tired. And, you know, you see how TCB and NS Left are not happy about Solidarity and what happened there. And I and I would say this whole thing about getting uninvolved parties involved and messing with them, that's all these guys are about. They do that kind of stuff all the time to regions. That's the whole that's the whole purpose of their existence is to go antagonize other regions and mess with their stuff and shatter their communities and now it's happened to them and they don't care for it. Well well that's you know, I don't know what to say. That's that's war. And they asked for it. They asked for it. This idea of the they asked for it. To those of you who have read both a TNP statement entitled To War by our delegate and minister, as well as your OPEA statement uh, from President J.D. Sanjurika, and I believe there was a third name. J.D., if you can remind me, I'm not seeing it right in front of me at the moment. But yeah, that was a running theme on both statements of the people who have declared war against BOM. Um, is that you asked for this. Okay, here it is. Um, so it's like, you know, at this point, you kind of ask a question, get an answer, order something, you get it. I mean, if you aren't that satisfied with it, then I think it was probably your mistake to, um, you know, underestimate us in that regard. Which, by the way, this was the next part. You mentioned solidarity. That's what I was going to talk about next. Right now, Raza, the delegate of solidarity, has uh, 205 verified endorsements. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, that is larger than some feeders, more endorsements than some feeders. Um, and the two-war dispatch itself has 5,600 reads already and 236 upvotes, which with the way upvotes work on NS, that means over 260-some people have sat there, or 230-some rather. Have sat there and thought yes. So I mean, as far as as far as widespread support goes, um, I don't believe like that's not everyone just from the north. That's not everyone just from Euro. That's from people all across the game reading that statement, and some of which choosing to upvote it. So like, hey, I hope, yeah, what's up? Just a quick correction for you, just because I gotta let the record be clear here. When you say that's that's more endorsements than some feeders, I think you mean to say GCRs because GCRs, there aren't any yeah. feeders that are under two hundred. Okay, GCRs. Raza has more than uh, Ark does and Osiris, so it just goes to show you that uh, it's like a sinker equivalent endorsements. I don't know what TRR is at. TRR might be doing better nowadays, but yeah, no record reflects clearly GCR as opposed to just uh, uh, feeders. Yeah. It's not just TNP. It's not just Euro. It's it's the whole. It's even more than just what you see in the Solidarity games. But yeah, the Raza endorsement efforts have been great. Obviously, Raza is Quebecshire, Quebecshire, depending on how you say it. And the Two War Dispatch is is making its way around. So th it's like, it's like not just a contained thing diplomatically. It's like all these regions, like you said, implicating people who weren't previously involved. There's a lot of moving parts here, a lot of people who are involved, and a lot of people who care. And yeah, going into it, that was my initial fear. What if you do all this, and maybe you're like one, maybe us, the the really active CNPers. What if we're the only ones who are like pumped for it and really about it? No, no, no. Uh, your average everyday player seems to be pretty pumped at interacting about it as well, and I think that's a great sign. Uh, so when can militia soldiers like myself expect the next orders? The next orders will come out, uh, so right now Solidarity is going to be a minute. Solidarity, they have like goals that they're going to do when they hopefully lock down the region and end up destroying it. Um, that will likely take, I want to say, I don't have an exact timetable on that. Confed or Quebec could probably help with that. Um, but as far as like the next orders coming around, I'm sure there will be something within the next few weeks, I want to say. But for right now, yeah, militia members aren't to just, like, stay in solidarity. Because every single day that you stay in there and keep endorsing Raza, it gets more influence for our cause, to which it, it expedites the process. It's like a snowball effect. So the longer you stay in there, the more endorsements or that the delegate accumulates equals the more influence that they accumulate, which equals more, you know, locking of the region power, if that makes sense. So it's not like you're just sitting there doing nothing. Like... Your continued support really does help expedite that effort. 
Um, so as far as the next standing order period, I don't have details on that yet, but I will say that the day that I do, um, the militia member will. Hopefully that answers your question. It might not be like, you know, the most immediate thing, like, oh, next, next Thursday we're showing up somewhere. Like, I, I, no, these things do take a little bit of time, but, uh, we are going to ensure that over the course of that time, we, we get maximum victory. So yeah, it'll be a good time. All right, so covered what the war is about, uh, some of the main players involved, Solidarity. Uh, I think Fiji had a question about if the invasion of Solidarity is justifiable. I think that kind of got answered by a combination of JD, audience member JD, and Ghost's uh, kind of explanation there. Let me know if it didn't, Fiji, and we'll be sure to add more to that. Um, but yeah... Solidarity is currently under the control of the Solidarity Garrison. Someone made, and I thought this was cool, someone made like a Wikipedia style like article where it was like belligerents and then it showed like the different units and it all, all had like our flags next to uh, who the units were. If I can find that and link it, I think that'll be fantastic. Hold on. Let me see if I... Uh, ideally, I would not do this during the broadcast. Ideally, I would have it already pulled up. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, we have some really great, like, war-themed promotional material that I think is awesome. Comms has been doing that, and I'm, I, I, like, I like how it's really thematic of, like, a wartime TNP effort, and I think that's great. Yeah, there you go. See, you linked it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Helene said, I don't know how this works, and I don't know how war on an S works. Is it, like, RP? Uh, it's not RP, no. So... So those people who think like, all of this is like role playing, no, there are like actual game mechanics that make use of this like overarching thing. It's not just like all RP between people like you would think. It's not like someone's planning out, okay, I go to war with you guys and this is what the end result will be. And you have to like collaboratively storytell the war. No, 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 it's not like that. It's like our endorsements versus your endorsements versus who we can get to do what, let's go. Like on the actual battlefield, here you go. This is what we do. Uh, so that's what that is. But yeah, hopefully it is not RP. Yeah, um, this war is very much real. I, about as real as a war in nation states can get. Um, yeah, we're we're doing very real stuff here. Um, invading very very real regions. We're doing invading. Um, yeah, of course we use. Maybe connect such as RD and of course indoor spins. Like this, this is plenty of action. Um, like a lot of action in this war is occurring on the side itself through endorsements and RD, as I just mentioned. So yeah, no, this war isn't some little story that we made up. No, 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 it's very real and it needs to be taken seriously. Yeah, and in sign of following up on my earlier comment about how I'm literally conjuring endorsements at the moment, it's because a lot of people, especially like everyday nations you see on the RMB and whatnot, they always want to know, like, how do you go to war? How do you do this? Like, how, how can you win? How can you, you know, do all these different things relating to like military aspects of things? And it's like, well, here you go, guys. Like, this is it. Um, this is how you war in NS. And with, you know, input versus, like, fighting and stuff like that. Like, this is how you support the cause. You can join the NPA. You can help make promotional posters. You can, you know, promote things on the RMB. Like, hey, guys, go do this. You can upvote dispatches. You can read dispatches so you stay informed about what's up, you know? There's lots of ways that you can support the TNP war effort. Not all of it is, let me use my WA to help the NPA. Obviously, that's the most direct, like, thing you can do. Um, but... Like, I'm saying, you know, it's not NPR or the highway. There are other things that you can do. Um, I think we can bring up a few more points. Um, so, yeah, there's two possible options that we can go here, of course. We can bring up the very, 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 very beginnings of the war. Um, you know, the BUM raids of Stargate in 2021 and 2022. Uh, we can bring up the formation of MGC, or we can, we can start from uh, Foundation Jewelry. Where we could uh, get even deeper into what made us declare this war. Um, because personally, I think those raids on IDU, a treaty ally of ours, and Stargate, who is also a treaty ally of ours, I think those are very important factors into um, 
making those fights war. Yeah, the the raids on Stargate and IDU, uh, they were big no nos. Uh, Long time treated allies of the North, obviously, and like Ghost was talking about earlier, obviously we're not gonna we're not gonna just sit back for that. So, uh, yeah, you know, you kind of reap what you sow with this. And as far as any justification is concerned, like you can say like, oh, just because they do it doesn't make it okay that we do it. But here here's the thing about that. Um, <laughs> You, you you can't do what BOM and TCB does with impunity. Like you just you at a certain point you kind of get the response that you've been seeing, which is everyone uh, everyone kind of piling against you. And yeah, I gotta say this this war has been a bit of a uniting factor for a lot of regions, regions that I wouldn't usually associate working this harmoniously together. But you can see that clearly the anti BOM TCB sentiment is uh, pretty widespread and. You know that in a game where it's literally politics and everyone kind of has like their own take to things? You know that if a large portion of people in the game who are actively involved in gameplay are like agreeing with one another that your region is, you know, doing some bad stuff? You know you probably messed up at some point. So this isn't like a he said, she said kind of thing. It's like you've been you've been talking a lot for months now, years even, and this is kind of the culmination of that. So it's very exciting but also unexplored times yeah of course i would like to make um a point about dnd here um a few points actually but um you we talked about solidarity a lot uh here and um of course the praf's efforts to defend their uh little frontier were in vain, and we have a very, um, we have a we have a stronghold over the region, and we will turn that region into a stronghold. But in this war, um, BOM and Elwu, of course, are the say on the same side as TCB. So naturally, you would expect they that they would come to their aid. And help out with the defending of solidarity. But the, an is, the issue is, uh, BOM and Elwu very, very much attack minded regions when it comes to RD, and they do not do any defending. And so that's not going to help them very much uh, when we hit um, their future regions. And um, yeah, so of course, an advantage that we have is that. One of, one of us gets it and they did or tell tip. We, everyone else would be right there. Um, the support we've seen from Euro, TEP, Osiris, and the Dell tip, uh, I was instrumental and was re- is very much appreciated even a, like month, a month later. And that unity will help us win this war. As they, those regions, they're fighting on the same side, but they don't have that. They don't have that connection or like duty to protect one another or like like TCB was not the major game player up until very recently and of course um, there's still been some of course I mentioned Obu earlier there's still um, not even like relations between, two, relations between the two regions haven't been at their best of course they recently withdrew their game site embassy and that due to and that um, this enchanted with with on with, with one another over there, it's going to put them at a disadvantage. It is really going to be an important factor in helping us um, obtain victory. And uh, there was one more point that I was going to bring up. Um, well, go ahead and uh, think about that for a second. In the meantime, we'll answer Brown's question here. He had his little head. He addressed this to both me and Ghost, so I guess uh, if Ghost wants to chime in, he can. He asked, uh, Bran asks, Will BOM attempting to exploit the myriad of treaties and spiderweb of defense clauses between multiple regions, some of which are rivals, lead to TNP reconsidering how it explores new relationships, builds treaties, and the kind of defense clauses it utilizes? Uh, that was not discussed before you joined the show, Bran, so that's actually a pretty good question. From my point of view, someone who is not currently in foreign affairs, Here's what I would say, having been like a former delegate and also having been a former minister of defense. Um, you often, especially like the treaty negotiation slash construction process, you often put in a lot of what people might refer to as like stock clauses. 
where every treaty under the sun has them. And a lot of those are like mutual recognition, obviously, mutual defense, cultural changes, stuff like that. But that mutual defense part and intelligence sharing part that often get put in there just kind of like to fill out the treaty, if you will, uh, those often don't usually get used. So what we're seeing with BOM uh, and why I think it's especially important to answer this kind of question is because when you put those in there, now seeing how that they can be exploited in such a way to cause this mass, you know, uh, apex of what's happened here, uh, when you put those in, you might think twice about really what's going on. And I'm not saying that if we had thought twice, we wouldn't have put those. No, I, I, I think we still would. Uh, it's just more so you can't just take it for granted. Oh, yeah, these are treaty clauses that we put in, but but it's okay. We don't ever use them. Uh, you see these nowadays being used, and you see them being used for on BOMs and some rather unintended purpose. And like I said, uh, or like Go said, rather, for BOM, as far as they're concerned, yeah, obviously they're going to use this to antagonize us. Of course they will. Uh, they do it on purpose. They know. Ex- I have no doubt that they know exactly what they're doing when they do this. Um, so it's not like, oops, accident, tripped another defense clause. I don't think they can feign ignorance in that regard. I think it's absolutely the case. Uh, as far as will TNP reconsider it, I think TNP, in light of it, has to be more careful. I don't know if that will, I don't know if that amounts to reconsideration, but I think that going forward when it comes to treaties, the gravity of those quote unquote stock clauses has to be you know, understood a bit more than maybe it has been. You can't really just like, oh yeah, here's a treaty, here we go, throw it in, you're good. Uh, it's very, it's got to be a lot more deliberate and like thoroughly thought out. And so I, I think from my end, that's what I would say. Ghost, anything that you wanted to add? I think it's important to remember that these guys don't really even understand how the treaty language actually works. Uh, they obviously thought that solidarity wasn't a viable target because they didn't understand our treaty they previously tried to exploit the sanctions by advancing a liberation which they wrote thinking that we'd have to oppose it because they wrote it and of course uh we exercise those sanctions for a certain purpose not in order to oh no the rule lawyers does it doesn't work that way like if they think they're going to get us on technicalities in matters of war and peace uh Obviously, I don't know how seriously they thought this, but like we would have to apply our laws against a couple of random RMBers that they shanghaied into a, a little tag raid that all of a sudden, oh no, we're, they, they got us. We have to go after our own militia. Like, I don't understand the logic there. Like, no, there are certain things that they, they could try and, and trip us up over this, but it's nothing that simple conversation with the other parties in the treaty can't solve in a, in a couple of seconds. And we're not, you know, we're not robots that are like, oh, the the sanctity of our treaty is is in question because they got us on a technicality and we didn't let them. Uh, there's this letter of the law, spirit of the law thing that's very important in diplomatic relations. And sometimes two regions have to know when to look the other way or to bend the the strict rules on the treaty if the situation demands it. And uh, anytime they're trying to trip us up and manipulate our commitments to other people for their purposes, I don't think anybody would reasonably feel like we have to take the fall in that case. So I I see the risk there. Uh, for me, the risk is greater for regions that are less inclined to agree with us and are on the same page with these guys. And maybe they're, uh, well, gee, I'll name the most obvious example, the specific that is an area where this is potentially a big problem. And the only way I see out of that is we have to be very clear and communicative with them. And uh, that's where I come in. That's where diplomacy comes in. And that has to be part of the war effort too. It's it's kind of a clunky, not very fun part of the war effort, but it's very important. And uh, I feel the treaties we've recently written are very clear as far as defense goes, and they already are not easily, I guess I'll say trippable in the way that you're that you're suggesting. I think that we're kind of already forward thinking in that regard of our, of our future treaties, and even more so after this, uh, when you see all the lines crossed all over the place, that's always going to be a consideration when we make these agreements. And 
uh, especially with frontiers and guaranteeing defense for for uh, people's territories, there's even more potential for this to get very messy. So it is very much on our mind, and it's already changed how we write treaties and how we look at them, and uh, to the point where we may have some older agreements that maybe we can't just handshake agreement the problem away. Uh, I think we could look at revising previous treaties. We already kind of had to because of frontiers, but uh, it's just more of a reason now to maybe evaluate what, what we have and see if there's any vulnerabilities that we can't uh, hand wave away. I, I can't think of any right now, but that's certainly a possibility. So uh, I guess if it helps answer your question, it's something that is mindful that we're mindful of and it's something that I think we should take a, a closer look at and uh, I don't want to make assumptions about our treaty partners if they're maybe a little more insistent on certain clauses then uh, they feel it's not acceptable to bend them a certain way uh, I haven't had that been my experience so far but it's always a possibility every ally is different so uh the long long story short, short answer, short answer I can give you, just have to talk to them. Sometimes it just comes down to you just have to talk to people and see where they're at and what their priorities are and how they feel about stuff. And you work something out that way. And if we have to rewrite some treaties as a result, then I guess that's what we'll have to do. But really appreciate the insight there and the question because, yeah, this is getting to be like World War One kind of stuff. Like everybody's <laughs> been allied with everybody else for a while and... Uh, this cross purposes thing is, is definitely going to start being an issue uh, if it isn't already. Yeah. And one of the last things I will say as we're approaching the hour and 10 mark here is that just like as far as everyone getting involved, but also just like, you know, what, what has to be said about the changing in circumstances is that, like I've said to people internally, TNP is going to have to get a bit comfortable with the uncomfortable as far as doing things that it's not used to doing. I I know that there's a, you know, a considerable amount of people and citizens who they have this idea of what TNP is or is supposed to be, and they'd like us to adhere to that as greatest or you know as closely as possible. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. I don't I don't think that they're wrong. But what I will say is that the the state of war and the reality that is currently facing our region demands a little bit of a deviation from business as usual. So, like, when you see the RA passing these motions or maybe, you know, voting to exempt certain regions from Class B restrictions for the NPA to let them do more things, stuff like that, uh, it's not going to be, like, one of those things where we can, like, begrudgingly be like, oh, I guess we have to take the other step. One of the things that I quoted was that, you know, if you're worried about going too far, you will never go far enough. And I feel like once you've already declared war and you've already, like, showed out as well as we have, you have to keep up that forward momentum. You have to do things that, you know, maybe you wouldn't do if it were peacetime. But that's, you know, it's where we are. So we're going to have to, you know, get uncomfortable or get a, get comfortable with the uncomfortable, rather. And I think that is kind of how I'm going to maybe end off this. Uh, but I will ask, since uh, I know R has been a bit quiet, if there's anything that they wanted to add to this discussion, because I kind of like to get participation from all the panelists. So, uh, I know we, you talked a bit earlier. If you had anything you wanted to add, I was going to kind of give you that. And then uh, we'll head off here. Um, yeah, well, I wanted to add, because there was an earlier question about what, why are we having this war um, that Ghost answered. I want to say, I think, you know, they've been, the two regions have been aggravating us for two years. And they're always in the back of your head. And then every time they say something, on the forums or whatever, it's like, oh, them again. And I think um, the Dell tip was the final straw, you know. It, it's not like that was the only piece of ag um, aggravation. Um, and I think we just wanted to we just want to see an end to their arrogance and thinking that they can get away with anything, really. Yeah, and I see Brent's message of thanks. Yeah, no problem. From Ghost and I, we're happy to answer questions that people have. It's... Uh... A lot of people do have questions, especially those of us who maybe don't usually tune into gameplay more uh, or are kind of more inward facing. But yeah, this is um, what happened. Like the like the episode title says, we're at war. And I think that's a great place to leave it off. Obviously, as uh, more things develop, calm um, specifically NBS, but also 
keep a, keep a lookout for the northern notes. We might have some northern notes coming out uh, as the war effort progresses to hopefully keep people, you know, more informed about what's going on. But yeah, Calms is going to be with you guys every step of the way there as far as what's going on here. So that is that is one of our missions here. So hopefully uh, this episode was pretty informative for you guys. Hopefully you got some questions answered. And hopefully you got some added perspective about what's happened, what is happening, and what will be happening. So, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, this is NBS Radio signing off. Until next time, have a good day, everyone.